Math is hard. Hey, it's Bill from Hunterwick, and this is a Nerd Stalking audio podcast on YouTube. Our panel tonight consists of the usual suspects. I'm Bill. We also have Chad. Hello. We have Laura. Hi. We have Jackie. I'm Jackie. And of course, Ross. May the false be with you. I'm the Trekkie that fell. What are you talking about? I told you I love both. <laughs> you can't. It's just wrong. As a reminder at the top uh, of the show that you can contact us through email at nerds at nerdstalking.com or via our Twitter at nerdstalkingpod. We're giving our thoughts on episode seven. So a fair warning that we're going to spoil the hell out of the movie. If you so, haven't seen it by now, get over it. Exactly. It's <laughs> very civilized of you. Spoiler yeah. one, the you, force is with them. Because you know what? The kid yeah. at the checkout at Sorry, Costco did not it. give me the same opportunity. <laughs> well, oh. When did you see the movie? Did you see it in the first two weeks? No. No, because I couldn't get a seat. I waited until the kids went back to school so I could actually get a seat. But the kid at Costco gave me the big fat spoiler. Okay, I'm just going to tell you this one thing. No, please don't. Bleh, bleh. And everybody in line is behind him like that. Oh, God. That's why you never cool. engage with anybody at Costco. You can talk to children. Uh, yeah. He's that. like 11. He wasn't even like a little kid. Have you there seen you the guy driving around with on the back of his... There's a guy in the States who has it plastered on the back of his SUV. Really? Oh, his solo dies. What a bastard. <laughs> yeah. He's probably so... a Trekkie. Shut <laughs> up. Or just a douche. Really. Or just yeah, an asshat. I think it's close to that. I think he's probably just an asshat. Right. It's One thing that movie. happened when I was preparing the podcast was the Oscar nominations were announced, and The Force Awakens got five Oscar nods. Although is that a record? Curious for music, a, special effects. It got the was same. There any yeah, acting? It didn't get any no. creative. No, uh, they don't. Exist. Nominations. The original yeah. Star Wars, Alec Guinness got a nod, and, and it got a nod for best movies. So oh, okay, it didn't get right. Yeah, the Same the way. only real creative one in the nomination this year was uh, Williams got it for original mm-hmm. score. Right. Yeah. Because he's only got like what two hundred and thirteen <laughs> Oscars for sound. You need two hundred and fourteen to make it even. True. He's got an empty spot there as well. Just some thoughts uh, on the pro side. One thing that really struck me watching it was the use of practical props and real life locations makes all the difference in the world to how it feels oh God, yeah you compare that movie to any of the you know recent hobbit movies or god forbid the the prequel trilogy and it's like night and day it's like looking at a kind of cartoon with real people running but they don't really know where they're running or have any interaction with the real world to somebody on a set in a desert you know, on a planet in a snowscape, it's completely different. It's right. a whole different feel. Well, there's a couple of shots like they're at the the cantina and then they come out and it's all a wreckage. And there's a shot of a Boyega and he's running along the field. And it just struck me watching that. Like it, it's just you're in the place. Yeah. And it's he can go from one end to the other. You're not in like a, you know, whatever, how many square feet where there's just walls all around you. Yeah. So that tracking shot of him running and the, and the heaps and this stuff going on. It felt like Star Wars. Like yeah. it really gave it a feel of the original trilogy. In the the episodes one, two, and three, which don't actually exist, but if they did exist, <laughs> in it I found. That Sorry, what? What? I've never heard of these things. Pre- it was a, a dream that Lucas had, but no movie company would touch it. Okay. This is how the script went, though. And right. in the description, there were stormtroopers, and they all kind of look because they're all animated. They all look like they've got gum stuck to the front of their shoe. Okay. And they're all kind of, their knees go up like a marionette. Yeah. All, there's a weird, and they all yeah. move in unison. Yeah. Whereas in The Force Awakens, the first scene that really struck me was when the stormtroopers come rushing off the uh, the back of the transporter. Yeah, that was, that was an exciting And they scene. were all people. Yeah. And you could see they were people. Yeah. You know, they're running in different directions at different paces. They weren't marching. Reacting but, to, you, you know, know, the, 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 the terrain. terrain. Yeah. But they also made a point of saying that these aren't clones like they used to yeah. have. Yeah. They, they made a point people. of saying that these are people that are. Yeah, but clones are people too. Yeah, but they're <laughs> but all the, the same people. Just, not right. only were they, they were genetically <laughs> right. programmed to behave in a certain way. So yeah. they were manipulated. Clones. It's like when you watch a Spider-Man movie and the scene where suddenly he's going up the side of a building and it now looks like a cartoon. Exactly. Yeah. And then he gets or to the like top and he walks Batman now like a man. Yeah. Rocking up the side of the <laughs> well, no, but at least I thought was a guy. That's a guy. <laughs> that's I'd take that any day. So, yeah, to your point. The, Especially the woman who comes out of the middle of her window. Well, hello, Citizen. It's like Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> I that one. Um, 
the reality of the, of of you know uh, an X wing that you know he jumps into at the beginning when he's trying to escape and it gets blown up. I mean, just everything is there. Right. And the irony is, that, you know, George Lucas, who shot the original Star Wars in a desert with real sets, real locations, real people, he was probably like, place. "Oh my God, you didn't film it in front of green screen, you idiot!" Tatooine's a real place. <laughs> they actually keep the the set, the original set from uh, um, Uncle uh, Owen and Aunt Beru's place. Yep. Star Wars fans go there on a regular basis and they rebuild it right. and they paint yeah. it. And they That's part of the experience. It, yeah, it's you know, a real thing. Take a pilgrimage to Tunisia. Yeah. Tunisia. Yeah. yeah. So I, I loved it. I loved the look of the movie. Yeah. I loved, I absolutely thought that, that that's the way to go. The irony is that George Lucas probably like, you know, hitting his forehead thinking, what, what the hell's wrong with you? Why didn't you film it in the studio? Yeah. Why, couldn't, why didn't you want all that control? But no. Well, that's is... one of the things that really turned Lucas off from directing films was the hardships he had on location in Tunisia and stuff like that. But yeah. isn't that what makes it great? But yes. it is. Every yeah. every great movie. Look yeah. at Apocalypse Now. It's endless struggle and, and difficulty. Right. Yeah. right. You know, trying to fulfill your vision. Right. And all the actors that were going through that, they all bonded and had a great rapport. Because There's of that something that builds torture. Like when they when they did the... Uh, yeah, I think Martin Sheen really values those three heart attacks yeah, exactly. he had. Those Probably not. Moments. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> As a movie goer. You appreciate the sacrifice. Martin. But the, the, in the Haas scenes on, uh, for Empire Strikes Back, that was filmed in Norway. And a lot of the shots the first few weeks, massive snowstorm, couldn't get to the locations. They shot out the door of the hotel. They put the camera in the doorway of the hotel, and they just had Luke and Han no, and the dog. Didn't. Yes, they did. No, they did. That's crazy. <laughs> yes, they did, and How's that's that's the only way they could do it. So, you know, that there, there's something about that reality of snow flying in your face and freezing on your 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 beard, your stubble. That you know, so you're talking about like where Han goes after Luke and he's yeah. got the tauntaun and all that. That's all just run out. Yeah, even when Luke, huh? Luke is running, you know, and stumbling, saying. Uh, after leaving the Wampa Cave. Did you guys know what the internal Nothing. temperature of a Tauntaun is? <laughs> it's warmer than the outside. It's lukewarm. Ah. And I oh, thought they smelled really? that. Really? Wow. We, we, actually, we actually waited for that. <laughs> That's we a good joke. Lost. Yeah, I guess you're right. I still want a, the sleeping bag. Anybody who, who wants to send me one, I still would love to have a Tauntaun sleeping bag. Have you seen them? Yeah. The zipper pull is a lightsaber. And the inside, it looks like guts. guts. <laughs> Intestine. Nice. But it's like it's shaped like a tauntaun, so you can curl up and sleep, snuggle up inside a tauntaun. I think it's a genius. Right. I love it. I love it. So also, um, something I appreciated with The Force Awakens was that there wasn't a lot of dumb, complicated shit like um, midichlorians yeah. and trade agreements trade and embargoes the, oh come on I, I don't know if it was you chad mentioned it when we saw it but that crawl at the beginning it's nice to see a nice simple archetypal oh, yeah. story the right text, the text yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the crawl at the beginning was like yeah. it was it, legible you could you could read it you could follow it you could understand yeah. okay this is yeah. the pace this is what's going on here's the introduction to yeah. the film as opposed which is like the star wars empire right. back and return to the Jedi. it is a time of civil war exactly. perfect you're in the right. middle of it. i it's get nice. it this is as opposed to this you know <laughs> there is a trade dispute yeah, Germany tax. Tax. <laughs> like the galactic There's stock market has dropped no, five thousand points you know. that's right yeah so it's just simple stuff right like, like luke is missing leah's looking for him here's you know, where we go that's simple stuff and go yeah. <laughs> it's like basically, first yeah. order that uh, offshoot of the empire yeah. which kind of makes sense that after return of the jedi they wouldn't just all roll oh. over and play dead oh or shack you have something that's Gee. there <laughs> um no i was gonna check and i forgot to check do you guys know the guy the bad really evil guy from the first order is that was that bill from the harry potter movies Andy Circus. You, you mean, mean uh, Snow? Snow? Or which, do you mean, bad guy? or you mean the guy that's spitting, the guy with the red hair? Yeah, a Huxtable. No, he. That's oh, not oh, that guy. No, that's not. No, that no. wasn't Bill. No, that's no. Uh, Dom. Um, Donald like... Gleason, who's the son of um, Brendan Gleason. Exactly. Is he the yeah. son of Brendan Gleason? He, he was Mad Eye Moody. Uh, that's, in correct. The yeah, that's, that's correct. That's correct. So, so he yeah. he was in a movie that you told me about. We watched about about time. He was guy that is Bill time. then. No, it's not Bill. Yes, it is Bill because Bill was in About Time, which was a fantastic movie, yeah. by the way. It was yeah. such a sweet, that was an adorable, loving movie. Yeah, that, you know Bill. He shows up it's like in the movie. end. He's in Deathly Hollows. I am. I didn't watch. Then how can you tell me it's not Because <laughs> I just disagree with you. That's oh, what you I do. Oh, you were just such a... Oh, Possibly? It was. It was. Who are you it was talking Bill about? Weasley Bill from, Weasley, I don't... Bill Weasley from The Deathly Hollows. 
Harry Potter movies, it's the same guy. Who was the dad? No, he's one no. of the sons. He's the oldest oh, son. Oh, he's the eldest son, right? No, he's the second oldest this son. This is exactly Charlie's what the Google is for. Well, I guess. Look it up. I love that you're vehemently arguing. No, it's not Bella. And you've never seen the movie. You're just trying to take the piss. And there's a really great acting, too, from the newcomers. Yeah. I thought they were great. Hey, yeah. doesn't she remind you of Haley Atwell? Oh, totally Agent right. Carter? She could totally be Haley Atwell's like, younger mm-hmm. sister. Kira Knightley. She has that weird mouth. Can I just yeah. say, for the record, Yep. as much as it pains me to say so. It is him. <laughs> <laughs> So just reiterate that, Ross, what it is. I have to actually say it out loud? Yes. Yes, do. you do. Yeah. Domino Gleason, star of About Time and uh, playing uh, Commander, what was it, Huxtable? I don't know. Huxtable, what was his name? <laughs> Tootie. Huxtable. Tootie. He it's didn't Commander have a sweater, Tootie? but I'm pretty sure Commander Tootie. <laughs> Tootie? Like, <laughs> the guy who's really? like practically spitting in his like, we were, if he just put his finger over his mouth. Yeah, the like guy, Hitler. the goose stepping yeah. guy. Um, he was yeah. he was Bill Wisley in the Deathly Hallows. Thank you. Thank you. But you know, a lot of those Nazi references, I don't think like the younger generation is necessarily going to know no. them no. to the same um, degree. Mm. I think they should. But they don't. But they don't. But now they will. But they'll think they're Star but Wars. Won't, but they won't <laughs> get it. Yeah. They're gonna look at historic footage and say, "Why does that man look like a Star Wars?" What is it? No. But in you know, Nazis are just somebody somebody who's like the uh, archetype for being bad. Like oh, you're such a no, Nazi. You know, no, you know what it is. It's it, it, no. I think. Come on, let's be. Honest. It's it's the the hat styling. It was the the jodhpurs and the riding boots and the the tailored the. Lagerfeld or the slick it? costumes. Is was it helmet it's, 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 it's all about the costume. The Nazis yeah. had the costumes down. They did, right. and that was not an accident. There was a reason why they did why they right. looked that good. They had no money in the budget for that, but they did it because damn, they look smart. They, and that's right. just echoed all through cinema, right? Like I remember when I saw Tron oh, yeah. Legacy, it was the same thing. All the the programs all marching, they're all in order. It's like it's always um, Nuremberg rallies. Right? There, there's like no that. accident to the fact that they yeah. look really clean and really, really sharp and really intimidating, as opposed to the hodgepodge just threw it together. Right. Ah, of the rebels. Yeah, and that's 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 there's a reason that's there's, cinematic shorthand. There's visual, right. yes, there is a visual the story are. being told through the costuming. Right. So uh, as well with the new on, on the topic of the new cast, which yep. I thought were terrific, mm-hmm. and and Ray, I'm so glad that they decided that for this next set of trilogy that the the main character is going to be a woman. It's about time. Right. She's a great character. Yep. The only oh, one yeah. that took Sorry. she wasn't the main character, but she was a great character. She was to all of us. <laughs> okay. Some oh, of that us. bikini. <laughs> Come on. Oh, my. I like the white one myself. Oh, yeah. I like oh, yeah. the buns and the white. My point was like though the, the pajama. Did night. anybody notice that the dialogue has taken a markedly different shift from the uh, from from what was before? From the 70s? No, uh, and and is much more modern in its in its in the approach the actors took, or in, in maybe and it was in the seventies. This is in the future. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> no, it was a no, long time ago. No, only thirty years. years. Yeah, it's it's less, this less is in the future of that time. The other one was in a long, the, the yeah. was in a, long 30 years. a long time ago. But you now got, this one is not quite so long ago in a galaxy not quite as far. <laughs> That's a lot longer introduction. <laughs> But you've got Carrie Fisher saying, ah, talking, I recognized your foul stench when I first came aboard, to the uh, Boyega when he's, ta- when he's talking to Han Good. Solo and Han Solo's trying to point behind him that Ray's climbing the wall. He's like, really? Hmm? What's that? What's that? Look, what's that? What, what, are, you, what are you doing Good. when you're doing that look? Good. We have to be ready for that. Oh, there's an access tunnel that leads. Why are you doing that? Hmm? Why are you doing this? I'm trying to come up with a plan. That's a very uh, contemporary yeah. take on it. And the dialogue was less of that uh, was very you really, I feel like that was written. I think that was more improv. I think, right? yeah. Possibly. I yeah. think that yeah. was. Yeah. Too. I, I, I can't I see someone. I wonder if it was that. on purpose. But. I think it's the difference between writing for uh, Peter Cushing and Alec Guinness, and then writing for somebody that you know, this kid who was doing stock photography. Well, one of Carrie Fisher's classic quotes is, "You can write this stuff. You're right, but you, you can't, can't say, say it." it. Right. She said that, you know, about Star Wars yeah. and things like, you know, well, and she I recognize she's your a great writer. Or when she's they were, a great she's writer. a terrific writer. When they were in the uh, cockpit of the Millennium Falcon and they're saying lots of technical jargon, she's like, it's easy for you to write fun. it in a script. That was really fun. Try to spit that out in a way that makes sense and sounds good. It's yeah. not easy to do. That was actually really fun. Now, mm-hmm. as far as the older actors who came back, yep. yes. I think that... You know, for all the talk about Carrie Fisher and how she I think she, she looks fantastic. She looks, so did I. Like, I don't know what people I don't expect. know what, yeah, what do they 20 think? 20-year-old? Like, she's not the girl in the bikini anymore, but 
No, I think she's still yeah, beautiful. But, you know, I'm not I think, to honestly, yeah, but honestly heard... as a woman, I think she's beautiful. And, you know, I know that she's, I think everybody knows, she went through a rough patch, right? She's got some city miles in there. But you, there are a points in her history that you look back and it was a bit, you she know, I like was family. worried for her. And like, now yeah. I look at her and I think she's gorgeous. <laughs> she's, no, but it's true. She's, she's beautiful. Like a, she's totally kooky. Yeah. I mean, of she's, course she she's is, a character. But she's beautiful. But she and I even, really, I took it as a compliment when somebody said that I But that she I even said... Her. You know that um, they wanted her in the movie, but only two thirds of her. She had to lose forty pounds right. yeah. before yeah. she'd right actually. Well, she's only like this tall too. Eh? She's a, yeah. she's just. A, I know, but I guess you know, Princess Leia isn't allowed to get a little portly. Yeah. Well, I know? mean, she still wasn't svelte by any means. No, I'm just saying she had. She was, and that's true. Told and to I'm, lose I'm weight. I'm sure for the you movie. know, she, and she was told to lose weight for the first Star Wars too when she was yeah. 19. You know, losing a little bit of that baby fat. There's a different standard for female actors in Hollywood compared well, to male actors. There's no doubt. Isn't Ashley Judd get the same shit? Ashley who? Oh, Grandma Grandma Judd. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> old Lady Judd. Oh, Old Lady Judd. Well, what the, you doing down here, Old Lady Judd? Did you just say Old Lady Judd? Uh, uh, apparently, apparently she's getting old. She's getting, getting them wrinkles under her eyes. Yeah, like, this is, like an old man. But this is that's this is that's Hollywood. I mean, even yeah. um, when uh, what's his face, Daniel Craig, who was in this movie, by the way, yeah, um, was out promoting Bond. He's they were asking about how he felt having you know intimate scenes with an older woman, uh, Monica Bellucci, yeah. I guess, and he said like she's good a year God, younger. she's, she's gorgeous. A year, she's a year younger than him. Yeah. And he it's said, she's age appropriate. Comment. What's wrong with that? And she's right? stunning. Ridiculous. But it, right. it's just... Well, like, and like, how many people would look and say, oh, no, I'm sorry, Helen Mirren. Don't come near me. You're aged. Oh, Helen Mirren is like the sexiest woman on the planet. Hello, but, right? Well, well, Harrison honest, Ford take his earring out. So, I <laughs> well, mean... They're more even. Because, yeah. Because you know? they kept showing her his shirt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gross! <laughs> oh, that is nasty. No, we're not... <laughs> that vest really chafes. <laughs> oh, my God. No. Talking about Pardon me while food. I readjust my. Oh my God! <laughs> Is that thirty games? Not talking about what's his, what's his name? What's his name? Kung Fu David Carradine David with like eight thousand piercings. Way to die like a freak! Oh God, no. But yeah, I think all the all the actors that came back, I thought they were great. I thought they were they were exactly as they should be. The, when Han came into the scene, it was a little obvious and it was a little silly. I thought yeah. his whole "I'm on the ship now." And, <laughs> You know, this I is like my Millennium argument. Falcon that I've been looking for. But you know what? There was a payoff there. There was a I payoff. Like payoff. It was, like it was absolutely brilliant. The original ones also had this element of uh, naivety to, to the delivery of much sure. of the stuff. Yeah. So this Agreed. worked really yes. well with that as opposed to one, two, and, and three. And a lot of Han's line, you go back and watch them again, he, he had really campy kind of humor he had very dorky well, jokes he's maverick because he's, he's got coming to town to play cards he's supposed and... to i thought be that i thought this movie was i was just was coming the... to see your boss as i draw my finger of course it was corny so. but it i think it was a brilliant hand solo that this is a return to form that he lost in return of the jedi well this is basically uh, going a, back to what you said wonder. in our first episode when we're talking about star wars like um the leading up to it where you're saying you made a prediction that this was going to be a Han Solo mm. movie, and he was going to have a much better, a bigger part in it. That's probably and even why though he came was, back after disowning the character for so many years. He disowned yeah. the character, and I'm sure he hated doing Return of the Jedi because he had virtually nothing to do. It wasn't mm. he? He was he wasn't moving the plot. Yeah, we showed that, uh, played that clip of him and Fisher. Oh, and, that's so yeah, awkward. but like we said in the first episode him, of, of Nerds Talking, that he, he was completely irrelevant to Raiders of the Lost Ark. We're not right. going to go there again. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> it's true, though. But this is what he wanted. <laughs> he wanted out, and he's out. He swore he's he would never yeah. do it. He didn't he get that in Jedi. He, he got it in the first, which is why he was so pleasant on his promoting the movie. I mean, possibly, he swore he'd possibly. never possibly. play. But, but he so actually had right. things to do in this, and yeah, he, but had he had a great out. out. And he had, he had a great out. It was a good out. It was the hero. But maybe he's not. Maybe maybe he's coming back. Maybe maybe like Luke's hand, they're just going to superimpose a robotic Han Solo on Chewbacca. <laughs> Maybe they're going to have Han's real hand so and the rest of him will be a robot. <laughs> so, um, make a clone I don't know if any of you saw this cartoon, but there's, um, army of the there's this really sweet but obviously um, very touching cartoon um, that shows uh, Chewie with, with uh, Ben. 
who mm -hmm. obviously becomes Kylo Ren. Yep. But as a, born as a child, and he's you know playing with him, he's holding him in his lap. He's um, he watches him grow. He's like a very proud uncle. Mm -hmm. And he goes off, I guess, to train with Luke, and you know, choose a bit sad about losing him. And then in one of, in the next panel, he sees him, uh, you know, killing Han, who's Chewie's best friend of all time. Mm -hmm. And it shows him targeting Kylo Ren with his bowcaster. And in the first panel, he's targeting him right in the head. Mm. But it's Han's son. So he hits him in the side instead. Right. He doesn't kill him, but he has to disable him. And that was just so sweet. It's like so Chewie must just, his heart must just be breaking because his best friend dies, but he can't kill the, the son of his best friend. Right. Even though he absolutely could have. Yeah. And we know that Bocas could probably. And all that um, uh, angst is all registered just in the simple. <laughs> But maybe, maybe. Well, that just ruined it. Maybe, it was maybe kind it was of a more, nice scene, it, and then you guys did that. It yeah. could be that, or it could be that <clears throat> it's like Lumpy um, in Chewbacca. Yeah, you know, well, he doesn't want to shoot Lumpy. Yeah, and maybe, I would. Maybe that we is were, a useless character. Somebody should have shot. Lumpy. I think he's already shot Lumpy. <laughs> Did another we agree never to thrown talk over about the that again. There was no episode two. Yeah. Another callback to uh, a previous episode. Didn't you have a life debt? Yeah. Yep. It must have been one hell of a life debt. I was going to say, you think it would have been paid off by now. Do you know how that uh, was written originally? He, uh, mm -hmm. Han rescued Chewbacca from the uh, slavers on Yavin. Yeah. He was a prince. He was Prince Chewbacca. And Atitichkak who we talked about in the second episode, his father. <laughs> oh, oh, we are excited, aren't we? I don't uh, remember he was that. The that king. like something from Last of the Mohicans. <laughs> he was the king of the Wookiees. I, I heard he was the prince, and I think originally yeah. it was that Leia was a Wookiee. And okay. they said, hi, that. prince, I princess, I'm here to rescue you that's in Star funny. Wars, but it was actually a Chewbacca. Oh, that's funny. I yeah. didn't hear that. It was weird. You totally made that up, didn't you? Well, it's it's easy to sound smart when you make things up. <laughs> Especially when your hand is resting on your chin. That's right. So, who's going to doubt a man? Stroking who's... my ZZ Top beard. Is that what that is? <laughs> Start calling you Dusty Rhodes. Oh, boy. you hadn't watched after dinner. So enough of the good stuff. I mean, what good is a Star Wars film but for picking apart mercilessly, so... I'm going to move on to the cons. And the first one... Con! No, Sorry. not that con. That's a... Yeah. I had to. No Star Trek references. Come on! Laura, Laura says Actually, so. Actually, that's the only good Star Trek movie there was. Okay. I'm so sorry to talk to you about Star Wars all the time. The first thing I wanted to mention was um, I really felt that there could have been a better introduction for Ray. I actually liked the introduction. Oh, I, I, thought, yeah. I thought the mystery is what, Wait, what makes Ray? her character so interesting. She's Girl. the main character. Uh, yeah. I can't believe But I don't think that. she knows either. You know, even a little bit... Just affects you. Even if you use uh, movie shorthand, like, just to give her... The thing is, uh, in, on the internet, a lot of people are um, referring to her as a Mary Sue character. You guys know what that is? Yes. I've heard yeah. it mentioned. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like a construct from fan fiction where you create a, a, a girl who's, like, perfect. She's the Mary Sue. Mm. She... Is perfectly virtuous, perfectly talented. It's like a wish fulfillment that they, when they write these characters, that it's the but so was they Luke in be. the first Star Wars for crying. Aren't they all archetypes? Yeah. Really? This, this is. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's kind of. I think it's. I think it's harsh because she's a woman. But it, she, you know, goes on to like, she's able to wield a lightsaber in a, in a in a capable manner. Oh. Right. Go ahead. Oh no, she's not. Okay. No, they okay. deliberately did not. The first fight she has with that lightsaber, she has no clue how to hold a sword. You do not mm. poke somebody with a long, the, she was like, the she tiny like a little end of a sword. If you had something that was clearly going to cut somebody with this much of it, would you use that much it's of the end to try very, to poke if, them? In fencing, it's very hard to uh, block a jab. Well, that's a but good she's point. But she's not fencing. She's two-handed, right? It's a, it's yeah, but more she's of a, used to using a quarter Yeah, I was going to say, right? uh, Laura, like you Still, said, she's got Still, a quarter staff, the, you don't poke somebody with it. You swing it, right? You, yeah. you would block. You would poke. You would poke, but block no, you, and then swing can, and then butt. You could... But, but she's that's doing all that, but she knows she it also sure. That's all she but did was Until poke. she tapped into the force. So I think so the, that the was, thing I about thought, her character. I thought it showed it was a nice transition. That first she's just doing this, doing this, doing this, which is utterly, and you know, against this guy who's mm. obviously very good. Poke, 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 poke. Suddenly, 
Oh, oh, swing! Wow! Now all of a sudden I've got all these moves. Like I can I accept. That showed. I can accept a certain evolution of the character. Like you know, I, I've things. I forgive things where they do things that are kind of ridiculous that don't quite make sense. But uh, for her, it just was. It really stood out for me that like she can jump into the Falcon and fly this amazing flight through yeah, the wreckage. The parallels and... to Luke are just all the way through it. Sure, and that was like the battle in Empire, right. or that was like the lightsaber battle in Empire with Luke and Darth Vader. He shouldn't have had any traction in that fight, but he did, mm -hmm. and for different reasons. I just think all the way through the movie, the parallels to. I mean, Luke Skywalker, she's got to be Luke Skywalker's daughter. There's no way and, that they're going to back with her. Right, that. so yeah. there's the lineage. Yeah, and Anakin's they're not the hiding that. They put it out and, front and center. No, I agree. I agree. And I think well, people are jumping on her because it's a, because the main character is a she. I mean, Luke, Luke jumped into an X-Wing mm -hmm. and having never been, you know, flight tested on an X-Wing, never checked out. Well, he used to shoot womp rats back in... On a, yeah. In a Skyhopper. Yeah. Yeah, but in didn't the fly an X-Wing. the planet. And yeah. then blows up the Death Star. So I think people are being overly... Even that is a little think. bit... Even that throwaway lines like that. Oh, it's... You know, when he's in the briefing, and like, oh, I hit womp rats. Like, that is something. But... Ray doesn't really get any of that. That's that, because right? that there's more. Hi I think there's more history to Ray, and it's more of a mystery that we'll find out in subsequent. I, I right. think there, there. I know right. there are moments when she surprised herself by her knowledge. I agree. Mm -hmm. I think that there were things, words that came out of her mouth, and she was watching herself saying them and baffled by it. Well, yeah. I thought her, like the whole movie is called The Force Awakens, and that scene where she's being interrogated by Kylo Ren and he's probing her, and she reverses it. <laughs> is it? I thought that was really well done. Absolutely. It shows her realizing the power that she has. Yeah. But I would, would have liked stuff more when you're seeing the introduction of Ray and her environment and how she re reacts to other people. I would have liked just a little foreshadowing, like where she's talking with the guy who's uh, in charge of handing out the rations, and maybe she can, you know, have yeah, some kind of way of, of like yeah. influencing him. And you can see she's got. You know, not necessarily the force right away, but she's got abilities that are latent. Yeah, but it didn't. Right? They hadn't awoken yet. Yeah. Right, but, but they still are dormant, there. But not that she can control, dormant. but even little little touches that would have so made story. it a little bit. They've just laid the groundwork. This is all will be revealed in flashbacks. I agree. And there is oh, no maybe. doubt because yeah. yeah. that was the guy who was pulling her arm away yeah. and pulling her back to the planet while the ship took off when she was a child. Yeah. So yeah. Right. clearly, she he was in charge of her. So, however, like the guy, we one one thing. One thing that seemed like a, a, a flaw in the script was how quickly the guy who <laughs> snag, snatched the little uh, BB robot or droid, BB-8, uh, the guy who caught him in the net, and then she went over and said, "Yo, yo, yo, that's that's my droid," and yep. he gave it up really fast. Mm. So maybe that's an indication that she mm, gave maybe. him a whammy. She, but she also, I, think she a just, I think she's just yeah. got street cred. I think well, she's, she's a survivor, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, think, like I think that was just a demonstration of her street cred. By the way, can I say, because nobody's even mentioned him, the guy, Poe, the guy, Poe. Poe the, Dameron. The best pilot. That yeah. guy, that actor, is so underrated. He is awesome. He well, is. In all, you know, everything seven I've minutes ever, on film. Yeah, really. But yeah. everything I've seen, he's been in a bunch of stuff that if you go now and you go up on the IMDb and you look at him, oh, geez, crap, oh, he's amazing. But that's what makes him a good actor. He, is, he doesn't he's stand quiet. out. He's so good. He's, yeah. he's subtle. He's understated. But he is very compelling to watch for those seven minutes. And he's not trying at all. But he's there'll be more of him. Like, I think a lot of these characters, even Max Von Well, they, brought, they, they saved whatever. him. They saved his life for a reason. He's going to come back. But that, that guy is, uh, he's... Like um, Ridley Scott's Robin Hood, yeah. he's King John, and he is so good. I, I like that movie. Because he's yeah. evil, but I mean, a true villain believes that he's good, right? And he's quite good in that. So I just want to give some props uh, to Poe, because nobody's talking about him. Right. So, uh, and now we've done that. <laughs> I have his number if you want it. It sounds like you, you want to hook up. I could. I would, um, I would, well, it's like the silver, I the silver Stormtrooper. I would you know, do that. That's a whole lot of nothing. Really. I think yeah, I'll lock up Plasma. Yeah. I think I'm sure there'll be more in the. I agree. Uh, yeah, the great thing. costume though. But when Ray put the helmet I on too, yeah. that was like uh, that was. Didn't that have the rebellion? It did. In it? And I looked to yeah. see whether that was Luke's helmet. It wasn't. Yeah. But it's a, it is a Close rebel. Enough. It is a rebel pilot. She's near yeah. at at. Yeah. And like, she had a little uh, action figure. Like it's a such goofy a... shorthand. Like I'm saying, like I guess that explains why she can like be such a great pilot is like she yeah. put on the helmet i didn't overthink that at all like honestly <laughs> no. I, 
I think yeah. that Anakin was in slavery, right? His mother was a slave and he was yep. along for the ride. Shmoo. But taken Shmoo. care of for the Shmoo. most part, right? And, he, and Luke is given the freedom to pod race and do all the shit he Shmoo wants to do. Luke is raised by his aunt and uncle, farmer, like nothing really going on. Yeah, he's like, a real farmer's boy, softy. Exactly. Right? Whereas she, Drinking she's a whole milk. other thing. Yeah. She's like, she's a kid who was abandoned on this planet. She's more maybe like Anakin, you know, she's almost in slavery. But Anakin was like protected. She, I mean, she's like, she's, she's like a wealthy for herself of... and learning as she goes. No, but there's I mean, a I mean, point she's there because ships. I think she could probably muck about a bit in the ships when she's raiding them, right? She's no, no, but there's a, there's a scene where she's cleaning the parts that she's scavenged and there's and a character or some creature comes by and like ah, yells at her to clean it faster. Who knows? But there is an element of servitude in what she's doing. Mm. The only way she can get anything to eat is by finding scavenging. So I agree right. that she's probably closer to Anakin that she's had a but very much, hard life. But much better handled than but I don't know if they Han- did in the prequel. I don't know if she's in servitude so much as she just, that's all she, that's the only she opportunity did. she has well, to she's live. she's extreme poverty. Extreme. I think she's and just no living in the get off I don't think planet. anyone owns her. I think she just, that's her only option if she wants to eat. Regardless of if she was ever owned or not, she wasn't at this point. And she was really surviving in this environment, surviving to eat, you know, and... She was building these ships like she has nothing more to do. She reminds me more of something out of Mad Max than she yeah. out of Star Wars, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's like these people that everything about their life is just, you're just on the verge of yeah. being done. Yeah, starving to death. And yeah. none of the characters bitter. have had that. And, well, she, and she has compassion for a droid that gets caught in a net. Yeah, exactly. You know, right. There would be no re- from her point of view, there'd be no reason to feel compassion for a droid other than that's just who she is. But I mean, so maybe she's the best one that's uh, it's arrived, but she's, yeah. Yeah. but she's the opposite of her cousin. Yes, except in the in that final lightsaber scene where she defeats Kylo Ren, you can see an element of her tapping into the dark side. She mm. gets very angry. Yeah, and same kind of thing with Luke. And, um, she doesn't Jedi. step back and say, "Okay, we're done. I'm going to leave you defeated." Well, she's she, like, she has baggage though. This is where yeah. Kylo Ren is a spoiled little whiny brat. He's and, so emo. And she, on the other <laughs> hand, true. has managed to persevere and keep keep her head up in right. spite of the absolute shit that yeah, she's been right. through. And I think in that brief... And so at one point, it's like, maybe I'm going to unleash on you a little bit, yeah. you know? As a segue to that, uh, Chad, you last uh, episode, of, when we were talking about the Star Wars holiday special, you were making... Um, the what? <laughs> you were making a comment uh, about Han and Chewie and how Han is always doing stupid things. And in this, he's again. He spent the thirty years since Jedi doing really stupid things. But I don't think. I think they're gonna. That's. I think he's sort of doing stupid things again when uh, Ben strayed and you know killed all the other Jedi. Mm. I think at that point, like he what just kind of what kind of father was he that he well, raised a son so that good. became the evil? Yeah, but I think that's why. Guy I think that's galaxy. when he went off the rails, right? I think they. I mean, I think they kind of try to cover that in the movie too. Is she said the same thing, like. Uh, you mean Carrie Fisher? Yeah, I went back to what she knew best, and he went back to being exactly. a scoundrel. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, he's not very good at what he does because he yeah, screws well, up. Yeah, he with gets two, two clans. Yeah, exactly. That, right? Exactly. Yeah. See, I think a better, you know, a better response would have been for him to disappear and just kind of go like lay Luke. low. But unfortunately, <laughs> they already had that story for Luke, so they yeah. couldn't do it for him. Mm. So for him to go back, it was very. He, he was always a sort of childish character, but that response to say I'm going to give up on that and I'm going to go. You know, yeah. well, and I mean, gamble I think, and screw right. people over. It's just kind of like I think they might be painting themselves into the corner with that whole like Luke disappearing Jedi thing. Because really, things have gone to shit since he went disappeared and got a lot worse. And it seems a pretty irresponsible. Yeah, way to go, Luke. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's, well, but it's thanks. Like, these are <laughs> thanks, Skywalker. It's well, that, no, but I think I, you're absolutely everything right. Screwed up. I'm gonna run away. But from his point of view, he he was the you know Return of the Jedi. He was the last of the Jedi. He's got to create this new Jedi order. And then it all goes, it all fucks up. So he's gone away to try and meditate and try to figure out how he's supposed to do it. Yeah, that's a good way to say it. Because obviously, just sticking around and meditate the solution. Well, it's better than just. Blindly maybe. doing something dumb. But maybe well, in the meantime, like, if they hadn't have found him, he would have. Everybody would I mean, have been I, dead. I'm sure they'll cover this, but I, I just Bill felt Weasley it was, kind was of weak. about to kill everybody. <laughs> right? I just felt it was kind of a weak, you know. So he disappeared, and nobody knew who he was. I just I mean, don't know why why they wanted to know where he was because him disappearing. I think that that's fine. He's one. He's an individual. 
the war will come, the war will go, it will go on without him, whether he's there or not, no matter how good a Jedi he is, because we saw in inspiration. previous movies where there was an army of Jedi and it still didn't mean a hill of beans. Mm. But I think that, the, I, I still don't understand exactly why the desperation for everybody to well, find look at, Skywalker. Look he's at simple, the right? Supreme yeah. Leader, he's all messed up. Don't you think Luke did that? Mm. By the way, you know the Supreme Leader. But Leader I think Luke, is? Luke represents is, hope. Yeah. That's cool. Gollum. He represents the return of the Jedi to <laughs> the restore new, order. A new hope, you think? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe, maybe an oldish. He looked like he had. Kind of, he looked like he had like lightsaber scars on his head. I think he, he to, to, to Leia's nasty. point of view, he represents hope that the, that the now I guess the, now they're back to being a rebellion because the Republic has been destroyed. Well, like, the like, what's the, the deal with that? Because the. Rebels defeat the Empire in Jedi, or at least win a huge battle. And I, I'm assuming that it's the New Republic that rises from that. It's probably just as corrupt. And then Not, so how is the Empire able in this, you know, they're defeated, but how are they able to build this motherfucking giant well, uh, nobody can base. explain the finance aspect because, you know, you, you, you build one Death Star, gets blown up. Yeah, they got to put that in the crawls, second. you know. But, Derivative bonds have resulted in the empire. You know. <laughs> that would have been an excellent crawl. Yeah. <laughs> well, it just took me three months to High almost yield. build a kitchen. So I don't know how they built <laughs> right. that star. Right. So you can uh, you can relate. You needed an army of clones. That was your mistake. So there, there's cut Maybe scenes that. apparently that will that will more uh, completely describe what's going on. Okay. Do they also show do scaffolding? They do. Around, they do, and they say under construction, and they got the tape. And you see stormtroopers sitting on a beam, sure. eating a sandwich, eating a hard sandwich, hats, hats, yeah. and but it's so, the actual planet, planet. planet. right? So it's not like they had to build. No, they just had to build the machine. They didn't have to. They had to build the weapon inside the planet. I like that there's no there's no ramifications when you deplete a star out of a solar system. I'm pretty sure that has some serious. I think they just move from gravity. They just move around, right? The the gravitational ramifications and the change in the atmosphere. They're the first order. What do they care? That's the thing. It's why you hate them even more. Yeah, and plus it's not Star Trek, right? We're not looking for science. I mean, these these. Because that's based on science. <laughs> well, it is. It's based Closer. on a lot more science. Oh my gosh! Star Trek, are we Star Wars do is this? fantasy. Star Trek is sci-fi. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Star but Wars so so like the New Republic movie. sets up sets yes. up in a different system. They're okay. not in course in course room anymore. They're right. they're in a different system. They're in a galaxy not so far away. And uh, the the rem- remnants of the Empire have you know coalesced and, and gotten together and decided they don't like the uh, the New Republic. They still want to reintroduce the. Um, the uh, fascism of the of the empire, and but the republic doesn't believe that they're really a threat. Mm. But there's one senator who is Leia's ally who says, "Yeah, you know what? I think you're right. Here's some funding. Go off and create this resistance, and you know, let's see if we can fight them or you know, uh, figure out what they're up to." Right. And you know, unfortunately, the republic doesn't last long enough to actually see the trouble that they. So is this are. speculation, or is this what you know? This is from deleted scenes. Oh. Right. That was a pretty boring scene. I'm glad they deleted it. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of the deleted exactly. scenes. We have Ross, a lot of Ross has copies of these deleted scenes. Uh, everybody looks like a little plastic three-inch action figure. It's true. In them. Yeah. I don't know where he. And it says copyright Ross Riddell at the bottom. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> and all the voices sound like yeah. you. Come on. <laughs> I also found uh, very little That's chemistry cool. between Fisher and Ford, considering they have what? very little chemistry between See, the two. I, in I their feel scenes. the opposite. I feel that. Before there's no. I totally believe that they had a son who went bad together. It's because oh. there was no coke. There's a hug picture that, that <laughs> circulated on set, and uh, when I saw it in the movie, I thought, you know, this is the way these two would interact with all mm. that history, with a kid, all those things. Mm. She's wise enough to give him space and say, you know, he's a twat. She just and opened her eyes. she's the general, right? Or yeah. whatever her rank is. I think she's, she's a general. 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 Everyone said yeah. it so wouldn't has... work, and it didn't. <laughs> so right. Exactly. And they went their yeah. separate ways, and they had a fucked up kid. There you go. That's right. She so always went for the, the bad boy. World. There was only one, but that was enough. But you know, Except for the Chewbacca years. And just to go much. back to Leah and Luke, why can't she just meditate and speak to him mentally? Mm. She well, does have so latent really, Jedi power. They don't talk much about her Jedi abilities. I would well, have thought they would have, the other They've ignored that completely. Or, or was it just him communicating and he was the transmitter and the receiver? And mm. she was, he just it, tapped well, into her that's brain. That's the way they played it. That's the way they played it in the movie. Yeah. And she was like, 
Luke? Is that you? Yeah, but she must have bought into some of that shit because she let her kid be trained. Yeah, and, and the fact she true. bought in, or yeah. well, she believes in it, she just doesn't have it. No, but in Jedi, Luke the, says the to her, is not strong or she in that says one. to Luke, "You have powers I could never have." And he says, in, "No, you have the same as I do. You will, in time, you will, you will be able to do what I can do." Right. So there is that potential with Leia. I she's think so she easy. consciously, for whatever reason, decided not to explore that and go in more into the political. Right. Side of I felt there was more of an impact emotionally between Fisher and Ridley, between Ray and Leia. Mm. You know, when she comes back after Hands yeah. off. I think there, I think she knows who Ray is. Yeah, I think, think Han does too. Yeah, yeah. Because remember so when they came into that cantina thing, the place, the yeah. Mas she said, place. she said, "Who is that girl?" And then they cut away when Han was supposed to answer. Yeah. And then she made her way downstairs and, uh, you know, yeah. found the lightsaber. I mean, I, I just don't think they could spell it out any clearer. And if they don't do it, I think that would be, like, I think it would be terrible injustice. Right. I agree. I think it might bode well, those scenes between um, Leia and Ray, that hopefully Carrie Fisher has, that her character has more of a, a motherly relationship with Ray yeah. and future, you know, and maybe Fisher can... I think so. Her cool aunt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Let's go smoke a joint. Exactly. <laughs> or do some other stuff. <laughs> do a bump. Yeah. Exactly. Like I think that uh, maybe in the next movie they'll they'll get more into Leia and if she has any powers that you know that maybe you don't see, maybe she uses them secretly. Right. You know, because the whole uh, Empire Strikes Back when Yoda and Ben Kenobi are talking and he says, you know, there's 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 another one. Yeah. Yep. You know? He's our only hope. No. There yeah, so if that's the case, like, what a letdown, you know? She's no Jedi. But maybe she is. Maybe she just keeps it under under wraps, and so she can, like, I think we should go destroy that base. And Admiral Akbar's like, no, oh, no, I don't think we should do that. Of course, because he's, 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 he's a cowboy. And uh, and then she goes, mew, mew, mew. and she waves her hand, and he's like, yes, I think we should, <laughs> we should go and yeah. that. Yeah. Well, she's, you know, ten times smarter than anybody else in the room. She's sure. she's the smartest character in Star Wars. There's no doubt about it. Unless these, one of these new characters steps up, Leia is. She's got it all worked out. And didn't we think that the the silver robot or silver stormtrooper was very easily coerced into? I know it seemed like yeah. it was such a waste. Giving in, yeah, but yeah, I such think a waste. I thought that too. But I also thought, well, she probably figured it's not gonna. They're not gonna succeed, right? Even if she did. Yeah, but doesn't she have a duty? Like, I, like yeah. To resist. There was yeah. no, like, like she did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's this button. Beep. Yeah. Not even, uh, oh, it's this button, but oh, that really just, you know, triggered the alarm. Ha ha, I fooled you. I think no. she, nothing like that. Nothing yeah. like that, yeah. I think she was more beholden to Caitlin Stark. Right? Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think but, they'll reveal more about her as well. Yeah, well, do you think she's going to come back? Oh, like, absolutely. She didn't, she didn't get squished uh, no in She'll the be, trash compactor? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in a way, this this movie is really just an introduction, and the next two movies I think are going to cover them. In, uh, the next two movies are going to be just the same cliffhangers with more questions and answers. Right. I think that's. I think this is it. I think it's going to be like. I like it. I'm. I don't I'm care. Down with it. Yeah. Do it. It's do Star it Wars, over, man. Over again do it. Yeah. Do it. Do it now. <laughs> Star Wars. But just don't. You know, do don't give me shit like episodes one, two, and three, which is so contrived and over sure. the top and ridiculous and pointless. Yeah. But I do I, like give me a simple little story with some fun. Yeah, I mean, with the first trilogy, like the best, like the George Lucas trilogy, they are somewhat self-contained, with the exception of the second act. Right. Yeah. These, Empire's I don't true. believe any of these will be self-contained. I believe they will have a continuum. I don't of feel questions. that there's and I, like while while there's the cliffhanger of Luke. At the end, I don't even call that a cliffhanger. That's what film does now. That's the closest thing to suddenly you see Thanos sitting in a chair. And you know, the next time you're going to see the Avengers, they're going to be battling Thanos in the, the yeah. Infinity Gauntlet. It's kind of a cash grab, but... It's like saying there's more to come. Yeah, it's a little I mean, extra, but it has. it's not a cliffhanger because it's like, oh my God, they found Luke Skywalker. The whole fucking movie was about finding Luke Skywalker. So of course they're going to find him. Yeah. Right. And if they would have left it out... It would have then been more of a cliffhanger. Yes. But right. he was found at the end. Well, speaking of being left out, I wanted to talk about uh, this deal with the initial uh, range of Star Wars figures not having a ring in it. Unbelievable. Really? That's like. Yeah. I thought it was just the Monopoly game that didn't have a ring in it. Well, no, no, I don't think there's an action figure. Well, there is. So there is a Lego kit. 
Actually, Max got right. this for, uh, we used it for his um, advent calendar for Christmas. <laughs> we used it for the deleted scenes that I did. <laughs> <laughs> that I filmed and are now available on YouTube. <laughs> Copyright Ross Fidel. You better hurry up and get that down. <laughs> I'm going to be up all night. Um, there is a Lego set that had uh, her, her speeder, um, right. her junker, whatever you mean it is. The, uh, the fudgical? Yeah, the fudgical. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> it's right. an excellent description, um, but there's precious little else of Ray. There's, I don't right. know. I don't think there's an action figure, and she was eliminated. Yeah, if somebody did an informal survey where they went to like Toys R Us, I guess, and they looked in the catalog, and <clears throat> they found 264 toys categorized under the Force Awakens, but only six featured Ray, mm. which is kind of like uh, Kenner oh. coming out with the line for A New Hope, and like there's not a lot of Luke. Well, you know, uh-huh. I mean, to be to be <coughs> fair, Luke was one character. So if you did, you know, the total number of Kenner action figures for Star Wars, it would be one out of a hundred. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you can do that proportion, but I think she is underrepresented in the same way that Black Widow. You can't get an action figure by clothes that have Black Widow on it. Right, the or Avengers. Gamora is the other example from um, from Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. 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 She was left. Uh, the Monopoly game that they said that yeah. she was excluded. Now I have a Star Wars Monopoly. Water, please. Yeah. And there's a there's a ton of characters that <laughs> aren't and some of the characters that are I can't even remember who's in my set, but they have a Luke and an Obi Wan, I think. Yeah. In my set. Or no, they only have one or the other. But it seems like they couldn't have a Luke and an Obi Wan because they kind of look alike as a little pewter character. Mm. You know, basic Jedi costume, basic man hair. Well, they could have done know. Luke Return of the Jedi with the black outfit. They could have done Luke from Tatooine. Which no, is but it's a little desert. pewter figure. There's, there's no green. green. There's, there's no, no color. color. And so maybe with her, maybe in the set, there's a Princess Leia, or there's, you know. She doesn't wear. She had a pretty distinctive hairstyle uh, and pretty distinctive costume. Maybe to I think I'm not trying to defend reaching, them, but it's, it sounds it's, like you are. Like I think I want to know why she sexist? was wearing tensor bands. Yeah. Yeah. Sound like a sexist. No, he's a Do you mean I'm, am I sexy? No. I think that's what you're saying. No, I believe I believe I stayed away eyes. from that term. He's already trying to insist that he is. So. The uh, Hasbro had a really lame response when people first started protesting, and that was uh, they didn't want to spoil that she was. Um, let me see the wording here. The they want to spoil a key plot line and that she takes on Kylo Ren and joins the Rebel Alliance. That's baloney. And how does that have to do because with Because if you figure. see an action figure of someone, you instantly know their storyline because <laughs> everyone has psychic but abilities. But the action figures exactly. come well, with, that is with lightsabers? Yeah. yeah. That's the problem, too. Like she's just holding well, what a lightsaber. If she didn't kill, what if they Everybody in that movie picked up a lightsaber at some point. Exactly. Exactly. Her with her her staff. Why did they have to have her with a well, lightsaber? Well, originally Hasbro released her. Saying, yeah. Yeah. Know, like, they released her and you pulled the string and, and, and she says, Math is hard. That's for shopping. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mel's Science is for boys. Don't ask me. I'm a girl. <laughs> and it just didn't go over with the focus group. All right. I guess they all had lightsabers, but I don't see how that is no, really a big I was, deal. I'm how like, much I that's really like Ralph Wiggum, did you? that's well, a lame. The weak sauce is, it's still a man's like it's a guy's thing. The only thing but it is, it won't be nothing without a woman. Well, or a girl. that's a fact. So if and they're as like, Han said that women always figure it out. That's true. So if they're they're like saying, well, girls aren't going to buy these figures, it still ha- is a weird supposition that boys aren't going to buy. Exactly, Fig- girl figures, and that doesn't Max, really make Max, sense. My son loves his Lego set with Ray on the. On, and yeah. I'm just the, saying, it's not like they're just pulling it out of their ass. They probably have numbers to just support this, whether they're they right want or to wrong. Make money. Four inch heels. Well, this I is remember, the age of big data. There is no yeah. question that this isn't backed up by numbers. I remember when mm. episode one came out, there was a change in the uh, in the script. Originally, Queen Amidala yep. had three costume changes, and then they changed the script. So that she has nine costume changes, and that was so that Lucas could not make three toys; he could make nine. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And people oh, were all that riding. is just yeah. yeah. That's yeah. why she has all the costume changes, one after Absolutely. another. In there. Yeah. Huh. So there was a Millennium yeah, Falcon playset. Agent Carter. That had Chewie, mm. BB-8, and Finn, but not Ray. Mm. And Ray flies the fucking exactly. ship. Exactly. Yeah. It just is weird to me. And there's another figure pack that has Chewie, Kylo Ren, Finn, Poe Dameron, and a random stormtrooper and first order pilot, but no Ray. What I'd like to know, Bill, is can you tell us about the designers and how many years they worked in university? <laughs> Did they write for the holiday special? Maybe they got a new, new crew. So it's yeah, interesting. Maybe the action figures are way more sexist than Lego, which, you know, the very first set my son mm. got was the Ray. Are the they speed. less uh, sexist in Sweden? Well, no, well, because they, Lego didn't Lego didn't have girls, 
right? Aren't all Lego men male until fairly recently? Uh, this was a how do you even possible. tell gender? No, no, but this was the thing that happened. Is square all, things. all Lego <laughs> characters were male, and this is why they created the Lego Friends series, which where they made ridiculous. girls, which is ridiculous. But now, uh, Wildfire, I think, was one of the first, if not the well, they first don't have Lego specific right. 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 elements yeah. that are that are specifically geared towards girls. They don't have frilly cutie girl things, but I never wanted frilly cutie girl no, but things. No, the when point I was is, is that they were. Okay, so we could say they were, non-gender they were either specific. male or non-gender specific, which means that they weren't female. Right. Uh, Until Wildfire. Yeah. Or Wild Style. Wild, Wild, Style. Wild Style. Wild Style. from the Lego movie. Wild, Wild Style. Style. Is that your real name? Wild, Wild Style. Style. But I know that the minute it was over, I wanted to watch it again. Yeah. I could have just sat through it immediately following. Oh, I didn't. Getting up. Children. Because it was an oh. AX theater, and you have you have seats assigned. If it was a regular theater, nobody would know. But some, you know, I don't want some guy saying, "Hey, you're in my, my seat." Because I had the best seats in the house, and it's like I one sat, gonna have I sat the next dead show. center of the IMAX. One thing I noticed is that Chewy looks pretty good. He hasn't aged too bad. He should have had a little. There's bit. a body he double. He should have had some gray, a little white on the muzzle. <laughs> they have a but body really? double. Yeah, yeah no, but they should have. They should have had a white. Yeah. Oh, I see. I mean, yeah. Around the eyes. Sadly, Peter Mayhew has. Um, you know, numerous skeletal problems, I think, with his... Oh, okay. Like all seven, tall guys. Yeah. Exactly. And he's, it's you know, late 60s, so, yeah, he had a, he had a stunt double for both yeah, of them. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, I'm glad he hasn't acquired his father's, you know, predator mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, said about that, the better. Kenny Baker was not actually in R2-D2. He was only mm-hmm. consultant. Have you guys who seen... was inside BB-8? Nobody. Nobody. Well, no. He was just at the Academy Scandal. Awards. Full size BB-8 came out. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. Real prop that somebody has created. That's a real robot. But That's it was right. Bill Hader. I noticed in the credits. Yeah. Consulted on what the I voice. guess his. Beep, 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 yeah. Beep, 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 beep. yeah. <laughs> you know, I guess it's, if you can get the gig, right? I mean, exactly. I don't even know what to say about that character consultant for a robot. Yeah, you're right. right. <laughs> well, I think that about wraps it up for our Star Wars discussion. Uh, thanks always to my panelists. And to anyone out there in podcast land that's listening, please contact us either through our email nerds at nerdstocking.com or via Twitter at nerdstockingpod. Good night. I do mean happy life day.